Hello everyone, uh, this is Suyesh here. So uh, we are again here in the section of our larynx. Okay, so this is the fourth part of the larynx in which we are going to discuss about the joints and its ligaments and the membranes of larynx. Okay, so first of all we are in the section of our joints. So as you know that there are two important joints in larynx. Uh, so first joint is cricothyroid, uh, that is between crico and thyroid cartilage. And the second one is between, okay, that is cricoarytenoid, that is between cr uh, cricoid cartilage and the arytenoid cartilage. Okay, so I have uh, written in the form of difference, not difference, just to compare both the joint and to study parallelly. Uh, okay, it will be easy to memorize. Okay, what are the important characteristics for both of them? Okay, so first of all, let's begin with the cricothyroid. So this is actually your cricothyroid, cricothyroid joint. So cricothyroid joint is actually a synovial joint. Okay, so, so they both are actually synovial joint. They both are synovial joint. First characteristics, and uh, this cricothyroid is actually present between the. Uh, we have discussed the specific cartilage that is cricoid and thyroid cartilage. So you know that in the thyroid cartilage there are two cornuas, superior and inferior. So this joint actually starts from the inferior cornua of uh, thyroid uh, cartilage. Okay, thyroid cartilage and attached to the sides of okay attached to the sides of so like this it is the cartilage actually okay so this consider it as thyroid cartilage and here in the below is your cricoid so just below there are inferior cornuas so they are attaching on the sides of that these are the sides these two fingers are the sides so they are attaching on the sides of the cricoid cartilage okay so this is actually the joint okay now in the second case the cricoarytenoid it is at, uh, starting from the base we are discussed in the diagram the base of the arytenoid which is actually present on the superior surface of your cricoid cartilage okay like this uh, is your superior surface of cricoid cartilage on this this is the base actually of your arytenoid so the connection of the base consider it as the base this is your uh, this is your arytenoid cartilage and this orange part is its base so it is actually attaching on the on the sides there are two cartilage so one will be attaching on this side one will be attaching on this at this side the base of the arytenoid so this base is attaching actually on the upper border so this is the upper border on both the side and between uh, the, both the border there is a gap because it is a ring like cartilage okay anteriorly it has arc and posteriorly it has broad lamina okay so that is why the base is attaching on the upper border of cricoid cartilage so it is forming a joint it is called as cricoarytenoid joint okay so this is the actually origin insertion and the uh, connection of this joints and both the joints okay now the movements actually the important point here the movements okay both both are having so first of all we are discussing a cricothyroid movement what happens in this case is uh, it has a rotatory movement they both are having the rotatory movement okay so it actually do the rotation but on different axis cricothyroid actually does the rotation on the transverse axis on the transverse axis what is the meaning of transverse axis actually what happens is that you know that this is the uh, this is actually your uh, thyroid cartilage so on the posterior side you have studied that there are vocal folds here present on the posterior side like this they are present on both the sides okay like this so when this uh, cartilage is actually present here so what is transverse axis axis actually so you know that these are the two horns here consider it as horns these two uh, uh, corner parts this one and these one are the two horns so on this uh, horn you can pass an axis that is from this horn to this horn so it is forming a transverse axis here so this is actually the axis of rotation so on this actually it is rotating rotating like this like this you consider it as this is your fingers are your uh, cricoid cartilage so like this it is actually rotating like this so these are the corner portions are inferior corner where they are attaching the joint and like this these are rotating rotating on the posterior side you know that the vocal cords are present here so when this joint actually rotates forward that is the on the forward side when it goes like this forward right the vocal cords present on the posterior side actually tenses these are stretches forward the vocal cords stretches forward so when the joint is going forward the vocal cords are stretching okay when it comes to the normal position the vocal cords relaxes okay so what happens is that like this your vocal cords are there on the both the sides and when this joint is going like this rotating then these are, these both the vocal cords are stretching like this this are stretching like this are open when these are going forward then this this is stretching like this this okay so just an example like this the actually rotation occurs in this case okay so this is occurring on the transverse axis so tension and relaxation of vocal cords is a function of this thyro uh, cricothyroid joint now let's move on to the uh, cricoarytenoid joint what is the function but its axis is vertical axis means ki, uh, means that its axis is like this 
here i can't explain but just consider this is uh, your cricoid cartilage on the base you have your uh, this a cricoid cartilage like this uh, arytenoid cartilage and the axis is vertical axis like this transverse was like this vertical is like this okay so it is actually rotating like this like this on transfer it was rotating like this the finger was like this because what transverse axis in this case but in this case there is vertical axis so rotation is like this addition and abduction okay abduction addition means going uh, two cords are adding like this the two cords when are adding are adduction and when they are going far away then it is abduction okay abduction adduction okay so it is actually occurring on the vertical axis because the axis is like this vertical when it transverse it is like this okay so this much is clear so the function is actually adduction and abduction i have written here and some movements are like gliding movements sometimes some in some direction gliding movements they these both the joints perform the gliding movements in both the cases okay so uh, this was actually your uh, joints okay i think it is clear and uh, i will be showing you this in the diagram let's go hello everyone so now the joints we have discussed in the theoretical part now we are going to see this joints in this diagram okay so this is actually lateral view so you can these uh, the uh, see this is the this one is your anterior side and this side is your posterior side okay so this much is clear so these are your thyroid uh, that is a lamina of your thyroid cartilage in this portion and this is your arc of thyroid uh, cricoid cartilage and this is lamina of your this side is your lamina of your cricoid cartilage okay now let's see uh, and this is your inferior horn so this you can see this is your inferior horn the inferior cornua and this is your superior cornua of thyroid cartilage okay so we have discussed the uh, first we will discuss cricothyroid joint so you know that cricothyroid joint has a connection with inferior cornua and the sides of cartilage so you can see this is a lateral view okay so this is your arc and this is a broad lamina so this area actually so now uh, you can see this area so this area actually is this as sides of cricoid cartilage and this is the inferior cornua so it has connection with this okay so this much is clear so now i have told you the movements the transverse axis so, so this transverse actually actually uh, in this i can't show but you have to uh, just understand that the thyroid cartilage goes upward like this and just comes back to its normal position so when it goes forwards it tenses the uh, because the folds which are present are present on the posterior side okay i have sh shown you in the video okay uh, when i was talking the theoretical part i have shown you practically by the page uh, paper okay so you can understand this so when this is rotation on this axis this is the axis where it is going to rotate so it will be rotating like upward or uh, some upward or uh, somewhat forward okay so when it goes forward the vocal cords are actually tensed here and uh, when it comes back to its normal position the vocal cords relaxes so this is actually concept of transverse axis and the rotatory movements for this uh, crico uh, thyroid joint okay so i think this much is clear about crico uh, th thyroid joint now let's move on to crico arytenoid joint so you can see it will be present posteriorly that is on the posterior aspect of your thyroid cartilage so that has dotted portion so you can see but here this is arytenoid cartilage uh, this is your arytenoid cartilage okay and the, here it is your cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage this much you can see so what is the connection you know that the base so this is actually your base so this is actually your base which is marked by red the red uh, circle so this is the base and the superior portion that is upper border or you can see upper border of your uh, lamina so lamina you can see backwardly backwardly and lamina will be having the border round border so it has connection with the base and upper border okay so this is actually the connection and rotation so it is actually on the vertical axis like the straight axis okay straight axis so it has connection like this means the uh, rotation movement is on this axis but on the case 3 degree you can see the in the crico uh, thyroid it was like transverse axis okay but in this case it is vertical so vertical means it will be doing abduction and adduction on the basis of arytenoid cartilage so two, there are two arytenoid cartilage when the arytenoid cartilage is coming uh, close to each other then it will be adduction and what will be going for, uh, back that is away from each other then will be ab uh, abduction okay so this much is clear so this is actually on the basis of uh, diagram okay and one more joint is there arytenocorniculate joint it is not so much prominent it is just a connection between your apex and the base of your apex of your arytenoid cartilage and the base of your corniculate cartilage okay the most important are these two cricoarytenoid and cricothyroid